Hallo Leute, willkommen zu Huxu, mein YouTube-Channel. And today's video is going to be a very, very interesting one, actually, because I am going to be reviewing a language app that I have been using since 2014, or around that time, where I'm going to be reviewing it for you guys. And the reason why is because I get this question all the time in my own life. Well, not all the time, but like about once a week, maybe several times a week. Depends on the week. And I've been asked this fairly recently. Um, some of my coworkers have been wondering about this, so I thought I'd make an entire video on this on my YouTube channel, even though my coworkers don't know that I have a YouTube channel. So, hope I help you guys out. This is going to be an app review of Duolingo, and a little bit of a head start as to what Duolingo is. Duolingo is a language learning app where it teaches you a word and f or phrase, and it has you like type it out or say it out loud. You can do either or. And then you can also do like other courses as well. There are times where it will offer you like different courses, uh, more higher level courses. And even if you are already started into a language, you can take their placement test, which will determine where you are at according to them. And so we're gonna get into the video here. So I've been using Duolingo since about 2014. I've been using it for quite some time, <laughs> about six years. So I actually started using it when I was beginning to learn German. And the reason why, or German and French, actually, I believe it was, well, not when I was starting to learn French. French has been like, it's like a 10 year thing off and on. Same thing with Italian and Icelandic. Well, Icelandic's like a nine year thing. Anyway, so I've been using the app since around 2014 and I will say that I still use it to this day. I use it every single day. Sometimes I use it like five times a week. Sometimes I use it every day for an hour and a half every day. And then I also um, think that it's, it's actually kind of fun. For me, I find it a bit addictive, but it might not be addictive for you. You might find it a bit of a burden because you can get reminders sent to your app. I mean, sent to your phone on from the app itself. And it is a little bit annoying sometimes. So they also have a different way, the way that they teach it is one thing that does keep me still going. I do still like that about the app itself. And the amount of languages that have been actually expanding since 2014 or around the time of Duolingo, I will definitely say that when I was learning Hebrew about five-ish years ago, of course, I didn't learn it from Duolingo itself. I learned off of YouTube videos, which is actually how I started learning Italian was through YouTube videos and like other things as well because i don't i'm a firm believer in using multiple apps and multiple ways to get fluent if you are serious about a language so i would also say that they do also allow like extra courses like they have some on flirting in that language some on other things in that language so you can even like expand your horizons and what i don't like about it is that you can get fluent you can't really get fluent with this app itself. The reason why is because I'm a firm believer. I feel like so many other linguists on YouTube and even just in life in general are not going to tell you to use just this app. I would recommend this app along with Mango Languages. That way you can get your fix of that. What Mango does separate from Duolingo is that it gives you more of a cultural aspect of it. I actually find Mango a bit more helpful than Duolingo. Duolingo is great, yes, but I will say that it's different for me and my learning style. I really prefer Mango over Duolingo, but Mango, you do have to pay for it. And I don't like paying for my language coursework the majority of the time, unless that there's language on said app, such as Icelandic, which is what I'm learning at the moment, that I keep wanting to learn. So. And then another thing that I don't like about it is that now they have included Duolingo Plus, which, I mean, it sounds great to begin with, but me personally, you don't learn with unlimited attempts of when you make a mistake in your language learning. I have had to go through many different errors, many different grammatical errors. Usually that's my weakness is grammatical errors in any language. And this app, has now offered to have unlimited uses of their lives. They usually have like hearts at the top of their app and it's going to tell you like how many you've got left. Like, okay, if you mess up part of the, like a sentence, a word, 
if you don't remember things, if you just type in something random, which I do sometimes from time to time because I may not remember a word and may not remember much of it. So with that being said, I would say that with their placement tests as well, that I found that it doesn't work very well. Um, cause I used to, I actually took a French placement test before I took it on Duolingo because I had, I think five years prior of French experience, but they wanted me at the very beginner level. And I was not happy with that because I already knew all of it. I didn't need to review it. And that's something that I also struggled a bit with because I don't really test well. That's why I'm saying is that placement tests, I always thought, okay, well maybe I can prove to myself that, okay, I'm better than this placement test that is being displayed in front of me. But for me, I do think that it needs to do better with the placement tests and knowing that how their people who use the app every single day, like myself and people who have used it throughout the years, they should definitely take more feedback from it because I don't like that the placement test isn't really that accurate. And I, and one thing I also don't like about it that I have not mentioned yet is that it doesn't have a lot of cultural needs. And as you've probably heard me explain with the, the difference between the Mango and Duolingo is that Mango to me has more of a cultural aspect to it, whereas Duolingo does not. I mean, they, they do have some cultural aspects. They do teach you conjugation, but I will say with modernized slang, especially because I do make videos in other languages from time to time on this channel, and I have noticed that, I mean, I do get native speakers commenting on my video. I get native German speakers, native Portuguese speakers, and they end up helping me more than, say, Duolingo or even watching other YouTubers who are around your age who can teach you these terms that they might th see your video and say, you know, instead of saying scheiße, you could say fuck. And the thing is, I mean, that's at least a good example for the German language, if you are at the moment learning German. And if you're learning really any language, there are definitely like ways you can say. It's really with like any language, there's a lot of variety. And I feel like Duolingo does need to improve upon that. It is definitely a great app for many different types of people. I myself, like I mentioned multiple times in this video, it's going to come off very annoying, but I have used this every single day and I still continue to use it because I'm still intrigued with the app itself. I've been impressed with their ability to make it a fun experience for the learner and for their way of how they describe things. I will say it's a little bit weird that they put bears and things that don't really have a voice as their way of learning, but that is just my opinion. And I do think that it is necessary to learn those words as well. And even I do love, however, that something that Mango doesn't really illustrate too much on in my experience is that with Japanese, especially because I am the, at the moment learning it, I'm still very much a beginner at that language because I am struggling a bit with the wording and how they arrange their words. So what I do is I like how they break it down on Duolingo with those complex languages like Japanese and Hebrew, Chinese, Mandarin, those types of languages. They also have more endangered languages as well. Of course, a lot of apps do have that. I mean, Mango has several different types of languages. I think it's like hundreds or something like that in their app. I will definitely do a video on Mango languages and why I like it more. But the main question that I wanted to address in this video is can you get fluent with just this app? And my answer is no, because you need experience to get yourself to that fluency that you want to get. And those of you who are linguists who, or those of you who maybe are only bilingual, there is a fluency chart because it goes from A1 to C2. C2 is gonna be your native level. You can basically speak it like the back of your hand. A1 is gonna be more towards your beginning. You're, you can, you're like barely, like you're just stepping in and you're just learning introductory words and very, very simple words and sentences and phrases. And this one, you can't just learn Duolingo. And in my experience, because I have done that before in many different times back in 2014 when I was learning German, I would only rely off of this app and 
I didn't feel like I was learning or expanding enough with Duolingo because I was not expanding how I was learning. And for many people, including myself, that you need to do multiple different ways to do things. I've talked to many people in my own life that tell, that ask me, F, well, what can I do to improve my Portuguese? And I say, well, what you can do is you can try and rely on native speakers. There are many apps for that. Of course, I don't use the apps for native speakers. I usually just look at videos of native speakers themselves. And so my other thing is that I would recommend this app for people who are going on a trip and they need to learn a language rather quickly. And this is a great app to do that with. That is one of the main reasons why I would recommend this is if you are going to a foreign land and you can't really afford a translator and you are reluctant to really go because you don't want to learn the language, you're like, oh, it's just another burden off my shoulders, this app can teach it to make it fun. So that's it for the holiday for this video, you guys. Be sure to leave a comment below and also subscribe to my channel as I will be posting every so often. And I want to know from your guys's comments down in the comment section. What do you guys, have you guys used Duolingo before? What do you guys like? So leave your answers in the comments down below as always. I will see you guys later. This is Effie and bis später.